good morning to all my students uh, today uh, i am going to deliver a lecture on a very important theme which is democratic peace theory the main proponent of this theory or two important philosophers one is immanuel kant who is a german philosopher and the second is mikhail doyel but first time this theory was articulated by immanuel kant in his essay perpetual peace in 1795 why he tried to mention about the democratic peace theory was uh, first time initiated by him in a way where he he says and he argues that democratic nation states or democracies are less likely to go to war and he has given the reason because doing so the democratic nations or democratic countries they need the consent of people which is really important if the democratic democratic countries want to go for war the basic assumption here is that if they want to go to war they need the consent of the people of those countries and in his very important essay which is known as the perpetual peace immanuel kant has actually figure out this uh, democratic peace uh, notion and but this theory democratic peace theory which is the part of liberalism paradigm has been taken forward by michael doyel and michael doyel is also the very important main proponent of this theory the democratic peace theory states that countries with liberal democratic forms of government are less likely to go to war with one with other uh, countries with those countries which have the democratic structure that means it is very clear that democracies cannot go to war with other democracies there are less chances and it it it, uh, it rarely happens that uh, one democratic country or one democratic nation can uh, go to war with other another uh, democratic uh, nations which has a democratic which believes in democratic ideals and the proponents of this theory draw on the writings of the german philosopher immanuel kant and uh, more recently also uh, we can get some a uh, notion uh, from uh, the us president woodrow wilson wilsonian ideas who in his 1917 uh, 17 has mentioned and i am quoting him that the world must be made safe for democracy that the world must be safe for democracy so he was more interested in democracy democratic regimes rather than in authoritarianism so he was very much in favor of democratic uh, you know governance and democratic democratic nations and democratic setup and democratic ideals so but critics uh, if you look uh, to what is the what uh, what is the critics or objection to this theory they would argue that that the simply equality of being democratic in nature may not be the main reason for historical tendency of peace between democracies so it is not necessary critics argue that it is not necessary that being democratic is enough to say that the democrat uh, democracies cannot go to war Uh, so they they criticize they uh, you know they make their uh, you know critical arguments uh, but uh, you know any theory you know it has to go through the uh, criticism and there is this is not new with the theory of uh, uh, democratic theory of Mac- mikhail doyle the democratic peace theory holds that the democratic countries are less likely to go to war or they are hesitant to, to go to war with another with another rather than the than the uh, non democratic regimes 
इफ यू सी द वॉर पॉसिबिलिटी पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ वॉर पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट और पॉसिबिलिटी पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ बाइफरकेशन एंड बॉल्कनाइजेशन एंड सेग्रीगेशन एंड कंपॉटमेंटलाइजेशन और इन अदर वर्ड्स इफ आई पुट इट द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट और इरप्शंस मैनी इरप्शंस सोशल पोलिटिकल इकोनॉमिक एंड मैनी चैलेंजेस और मोस्टली हैपनिंग इन अथॉरिटेरियन नेशंस एंड दैट इज बिकॉज द द अथॉरिटेरियन सिस्टम इज सच वायर देयर इज लेस अकाउंटेबिलिटी इट इज नॉट बेस्ड ऑन द डेमोक्रेटिक आइडियल्स एंड द डेमोक्रेटिक आइडियल्स ऑल एक्चुअली लैकिंग एंड देयर फोर अ पर्सन हु इज इन पावर कैन टेक डिसीजन्स एंड अ बॉडी ऑफ पीपल कैन टेक डिसीजन्स एंड दे आर नॉट मच रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू द कॉन्जेंट ऑफ पीपल दे शुड नॉट ऑस्क टू द पीपल एंड दिस दिस थेरी गोज फर्दर एंड the theory evolved from the writings of german philosopher which i mentioned and also uh, we can see also uh, the effect of this democratic peace theory in monroe doctrine in united states of america uh, which came into existence 1832 uh, the adoption of the 30, 1832 monroe doctrine by the united states of america the theory is based on the fact that declaring war is a uh, democratic country requires citizen support and legislative approval uh, let us go to what are the basic reasons uh, that why uh, uh, what proponent proponents and exponents of the democratic peace theory what uh, what are what uh, reasons they have cited uh, in favor of why democracies are hesitant to to go to war and let me just go step by step uh, the first uh, first uh, assumption of the democratic peace uh, proponents of the democratic peace theory is that uh, they said that the citizens of the democratic uh, democratic nations usually have some say and legislative decisions have to declare war uh, uh, it is not easy in a democratic uh, country that to go to war because it has to be approved by the legislative uh, by the legislature of that country and the consent of the people is very important uh, to declare war or to declare peace Uh, and that is something uh, the countries uh, democratic nations uh, have to look into and the second thing uh, is that the in democracies the voting public holds their elected uh, leaders responsible for human financial war losses if anything uh, uh, if anything adversary uh, happens in the country uh, where there are uh, losses of economic losses or property destruction or annihilation or holocaust whatever is happening uh, after war uh, you know because of war so all will be made responsible those people who are actually the leaders and therefore uh, the leaders are more responsible to the uh, to the people uh, uh, therefore they cannot go uh, they cannot easily opt for war uh, so it may happen in rare situations but in most of the cases the democratic uh, leaders they have to ask the permission from the people and uh, there is a uh, the it has to be uh, uh, they should get the they they should get done uh, in the legislature of that country in democracies the voting public holds their elected leaders responsible for human financial losses which i mentioned the another reason is when war, when held public accountable government leaders are likely to create diplomatic institution for resolving international crisis and what we have seen in a democratic nation is that democracies will prefer if there is anything uh, conflict or any sort of uh, uh, you know a wrong thing happens uh, or the relations are not going smoothly then they can use a dialogue uh, process and they can initiate dialogue they can initiate diplomacy they can uh, go for democratic uh, uh, methods to resolve the crisis situation they cannot directly go for war so democracy rarely views countries with similar policies and forms of government as hostile so it happens most of the democratic countries they don't consider other countries as hostile nations usually possessing more wealth and other states democracies uh, uh, avoid war do, to preserve their resources and as war, as we all know war begets war and after war what remains holocaust destruction of property resource untold stories of human right, massive human rights violations and economic losses and the democratic nations are not willi- willing to uh, to do that because they want to preserve their economic uh, uh, prosperity and they want to build their uh, political systems and they want to make their political systems more responsible more accountable and more successful more progressive on daily basis rather than going for war option thank you so much for this uh, theory see you in next time uh, in in my ne- next lecture take care of yourself